Salutations, my friends. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO, the last days of your playing as a beautiful Far Eastern Soviet Republic. But right now, first of all, we have a smarter academic base, but we'll get to that in just a moment after we go through it. Focus and a few comments first. So I asked you guys whether we should do things such as lessons from Krestinsky or lessons of Sokol uh, Sokolnikov. And I asked you guys, and you guys, overall, influence or popularity of these decisions, the one you guys chose that I should do is the one that gives us less or less interest rate by 4%. Now, I, I want more GDP, but 1% versus 4% interest rate for now, for this campaign, if I play as uh, Sablin or Bratia again someday, I'll probably go down this path, but it was recommended that I choose lessons from Sokolnikov. So Gregory Sokolnikov was one of the first members of the Bolshevik Party as an economist who put much time and thought into the development of the first socialist economy. He argued that a high degree of centralization would be necessary for the Soviet economy to recover and expand. Following his ideas, we can start centralizing everything more. If we command, then everyone will follow. The whole economy must move as one with the proletariat in charge. Now this is the only step we're going to take in which we are actually choosing authoritarian socialism. This is one of the very few times I will do this in this campaign. Actually, probably the only time. But we have a smart academic base. Time and time again, societies crumble. All will agree it is usually a slow, painful process. However, there are many voices of dissident or dissent as to the exact cause. One prominent theory is that the foundation of any complex society is education, molding adolescents to fit a role in any society's key to maintaining its longevity. When a society experiences conflict, be it economic recession, civil war, or social conflict, money and attention is often drawn away from school and creating a vicious cycle that slows down technological progress and discovery and kills curiosity. Towards the future, we get more output, research speed, and production efficiency cap, but happy 1967, my friends. It is, in my opinion right now, or at least my goal, that we can hopefully get to mid-68, maybe mid-68 by the end of this video. We have a lot to read, a lot to do, and a lot to discover. So, with this, with our focus that we just chose, we will get only 8%, hopefully, annual debt interest, which means our GDP will grow faster than the debt that we accrue. And that will be very muy bueno. Let's go to get 1960s base bleed, because I love artillery so much. I love when things go boom. So, uh, let's see. Actually, construction. I did say I want to wait until we have 20 out of 20, and then another line of 20 out of 20 before we do the construction thing, even though it looks pretty good, honestly. Like, uh, it increases GDP, which is nice, you get a little more debt, whatever, encourage agricultural mechanization. Let's go ahead and do that. It doesn't help GDP at all, which I don't like, but we get a little more debt, which is not good, but, and this is a bigger but, it helps our agricultural uh, progress, which is very good for us right now. Agricultural process, it's going up quite a bit, five a month, awesome. This one is seven a month for poverty, yes, please, yes, 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 yes. Lessons from Solonikov. And now we shall immediately do the question of famine. The Union is ill. Bandits, warlords, and foreign powers prowl her lands. Even our bastards is not safe from instability and catastrophe. The most visible way this manifests itself is in the food supply. Our people cry out for bread and there's not enough available. This is a hard choice as we only have a limited supply of money available. We can provide it a relief, but it comes at a cost to our industrial investments. We could tell our people to tighten their belts and get on with the job instead, an option that hardly anyone could stomach. But we must choose because otherwise we won't have a plan. We must make hard decisions. It's always tough being the one who has to make hard decisions because, well, some decisions are difficult to make. Ah, 12 billion, very nice. So now, look at that. Our GDP will now grow faster than our debt, and that is an amazing thing. We have secured our future. Well, maybe not secured our future, but we'll get there. Horizontal Industrial Organization organization 3, yes, yes, yes. Currently 1.12 political power a day. And not, that's not, not too bad. 78%, I mean, even though we did increase authoritarian socialism once, we're doing pretty well. And it helps appease others that might not necessarily agree with libertarian socialism. Mostly people like Braun. I think Braun is the guy that is more yeah, authoritarian socialist. As well as Mahiv. Very cool. And that doesn't do very much for us. My apologies, just a little bit of a break there. So, our current annual deficit is merely $654 billion. Let's go ahead and invest in construction, though. A little more debt, but 50% and more GDP. Mm. So, it's 12.11. And which we can see up there as well. 50% faster. So, you'll be done within less than a month. Roughly a month, but a little less than a month. So, that's not too bad. The question of famine actually... Oh, not bad. 
Oh wait, uh, when removed, moderately increases. Okay, moderately increases when it's done, and right now we get the bonus. Cool. So we just took the hit to uh, our own popularity. We could do that. I like industrial and agricultural improvements, but let's do this with poverty. Provide relief to communities. It'll cost us down the line, it'll have some economic issues, and it might not be the strategically sensible thing to do, but we're socialists, darn it. And if people are starving, then we get them bread. The social cost of standing by and doing nothing is far too high and would destroy us politically. If a famine starts, we uh, rush aid to the affected areas with no regard for the cost. It is the right thing to do, and it's the only thing our values would have us do. Hmm. Well, we're doing stuff. Definitely promise you that we're doing stuff. And we've already completed a lot of the stuff here, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, we got we got speed back. Actually, oh no, it is only 67. Yeah, we got, it's going to be a long episode. Hey, look, our GDP went up by 0.2 though, and that's good. And that's only 614 bil million, not billion. Ooh, that would be really bad, but million. Now we're building ourselves up here, which is nice, so we can help reduce our deficit. And hopefully, oh, yeah, good job, England. Very cool, very cool. And IO Blaze once more, very nice. Now eventually, we do have to focus more on our military. Oh, we got plenty of guns, look at that. Oh, look at this. We're actually pretty good on almost everything. If that's the case, what if we did this? You were 20 combat with, which is nice. Uh, oh, recon, huh? You actually get, you get 35, how much? For 20 main battle tanks, you get 35 armor? Oh, supply use goes up barely, just, oh, do we have some extra tanks here? Oh, well, there goes whales. Uh, any extra tanks at all? No, we have, yeah, we really don't have any. Uh, motorized? Maybe? Maybe we have some... Yeah, we got some motorized. Gives you three and a half. IFVs give you four, which I don't like using IFVs. Uh, three, three and a half. Mm, is a point five worth it? Uh, let's see. It gives you exactly the same thing. Ooh. We will have to make some more military factories eventually. Motorized. Yeah. Oh, wait. Main battle tanks. We gotta make some military factories. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with motorized for now. We'll see what happens. We've got another very light tank, light infantry division. England defeats Wales. So that's not really no surprise there. And can we convert these guys over to a normal good division? Oh, and there go our guns and artillery and support equipment. Motorized, motorized is okay though. Uh, now we are done with the left side of the tree. We're done with the second to the left side of the tree, and let us continue with this stuff. Either reaching out to the world, but let's defend the revolution. We don't exactly have the strongest army out there. Our forces are made up of groups of militia and partisan bands. We aren't an organized professional force by any means, but that's not an excuse for poor performance. If we, are, if we are a group of irregulars, we'll have to be the best group of irregulars you'll find in the country. We will train hard in all types of terrain. We'll have the best equipment as, and as many men as we can muster. And we'll be backed up by high morale and commissars to tell what they are fighting for. Very good. Armed rabble and better guns. Cool. Spend more. 690, that's not ideal, but you know what? That's okay, just keep building. Build, build, build. Now, I really wish we could get more down here. Oh, we still got that bonus boost for now. Yes, build, 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 build. At least we have two for now. Hopefully we'll get even more here, so that'll be nice. Six, oh, it went up to 700 million, million. That's not good, but with the GDP doing okay. Uh, that's, I'm, I'm feeling kind of okay. I'm feeling kind of okay about this now. No matter what happens, that'll always be well. That you almost should always be smaller. And now we're just kind of collecting political power, which is actually really nice in my mind. This way, we can save it up, spend it later on things. Especially once we go to war with the rest of Siberia, we'll need all this extra political power to just core stuff. And it shouldn't take too long to do. And we're gonna immediately ooh create a unit. Ah, it's gonna cost us either way. We create units or get this as well. Let's see, combat's going. Our army professional. Professionalism begins to rise, armor technology. Yeah, we're going to go down this path first. So we'll prepare the factories. In the midst of the chaos that has engulfed Russia, we have struggled to produce enough weapons to properly armor military. At times, it seems as if we had more partisans than guns. In order to prevent this from ever occurring again, though, we will have to make further investments into our armed factories. Our soldiers will have to be sufficiently supplied, after all. Fighting an enemy with twice as many men as rifles would be a madness, yes. Just throwing them away like that? No, thank you. We don't throw our men away. Now, this is ahead of time, which is great to see. So we're pretty doing pretty well on that. Doing pretty darn well. Let's go to armor. And now it might be a good time to start improving tanks. Uh, we can actually probably... Before we start making garbage, let's get some improved main battle tanks. That would be good, because we don't want to do anything too garbage-like. And get concurrent frontal assaults. That would be very good. And we are now done with our land doctrine. Actually, before we do that, let's double-check our focus street. Do we get a bonus for land doctrine? Not there. Military police? 
Uh, not bag, spend the militia. Armor. Yes, we do. So we could do this right now. Let's wait. You know, we might as well wait, right? Uh, over here, helicopter engines. Something that'd be really good would actually be logistic companies, but also engineers. We already have engineers. Infantry stuff. We actually probably get some better motors. Let's not produce garbage. So, yes. The armed rabble, my friends. Let's see anything over here. Uh, 700 mil billion? Million? Whatever. Sablin watched with disbelief as the 44th Battalion struggled its way through the drills. His time as a military officer was brief, but never before he had seen such undisciplined rabble. Many soldiers struggled behind in their optical course, creating jams or simply collapsing out of exhaustion. Perhaps a leader in the past, and indeed many in the present, would brutalize the men into formation, beating and tormenting them until they acted like the perfect, perfect machines they wanted them to be. But Sablin was not that leader. He walked up to the commander of the battalion, Lieutenant Colonel... Novikov, who saluted him as he passed by. No need for that, comrade, Salvin began. I just need to ask, what's wrong with the unit? We thought we implemented measures to improve the soldier's discipline. Measures, measures, measures. Oh, Kitov sighed, lighting up a cigarette before speaking. You can't run if your boots are worn out. You can't shoot if you don't have guns. You can't train on what stuff you've got if they just keep wearing out. You know what I'm saying, comrade? Salvin nodded and made a mental note to visit the People's Commissar of Defense once inspection was done. What was? What is the worth of idealism in scarcity? Well, I mean, that's good and all, but it doesn't seem like... It's, I mean, they say they're exhausted. It wasn't the equipment that was the problem. They were just exhausted. And, oh, hello. National Protection Army. Oh. Ultra Nationalists versus China. Moving. Hmm. Hmm. I still want to play as China, but I'm, I'm. At the time of this recording, I'm waiting until there's an update for China, so. Uh, oh, poverty relief programs. Yes. But I'm just, I'm just waiting right now. I'm seriously just waiting until they get an update so that China can just go to war eventually with Japan and have a great time and just cause all sorts of conflict. And also, Poland exists. And we, have, we had Nova Polska here eventually. Oh, German sovereign. What the heck is this? Dembach? Von Dembach? Oh. But we have Poland. Home defense. Yeah, because Germany is led by Gullring now. What are they up to? Oh, hello. Plan Zero. Operation Mokti? Oh. Fall Augustus? Little Stanlecker, Operation Fruling, and Operation Sichelschnitt. Very cool. We got more debt, but we can have more GDP. So, uh, discipline the men. The men that make up our army are daring and devoted, yet they lack the proficiency that will be required of them if they are to fight effectively. More drills will be required if they are to become the professional fighting force that they need to be. We are unlikely to ever to be able to reach the levels of reliability that other warlords have achieved, nor can we ever hope to, but what we can have or what we have assured. As a proper Red Army, one capable of defending the principles and the peoples of the revolution in which we get combat schooling, uh, more attack, more defense, more training level, and army professionalism monthly plus one sign me up. And poverty rate looking pretty darn bueno right now. Oh, and it looks like Azan Delan declared war on the popular Republic of the Congo. Well, if they're so popular, why they get declared war upon? Oh, oh man, look at England. That's looking not too bad. Oh, my bad. The United Kingdom of, or just not even United, just the Kingdom of Wales, of England and Wales. Ah, led by Thatcher. Hello, Thatcher. Uh, Thatcher was fun when I played as her. She started off very, like, very keen on like, economic issues. A spoiler, you know, spoiler. She started off, like, really gung ho about economic issues. And then she got a little bit more, um, dictatorial, say, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe. Go check out that episode, that series anyways, you know, if you haven't already. If you have, thank you. If you haven't, you know, I would recommend it, because it's, it's interesting seeing what happens when people go a little nuts. Also, that was another comment from yesterday, uh, regarding the, what, Dolvanger? Someone wanted me to play Dolvanger two episodes ago, and now you guys gave me comments. Apparently, Dolvanger was one of the guys in the demo for this mod that was, that you could play, so... I didn't realize that at the time. Uh, we actually have a little blue bl banner here on our flag. But anyways, um, yeah, play as Delvanger. Delvanger, and there's ways that uh, it can go bye-bye. We'll put it like that. Many ways, apparently. So we're ready the Commissars. Commissars should not be employed to shoot those who run from the battlefield and persecute men who refuse to become soldiers. Such practices will only force our people to live in fear of us, and when we should be the ones giving them their freedom. Our Commissars should not be used as a tools of terror, but they will be advisors and guides to our men, thus building cohesion and raising morale. Two of the most important factors we need to improve if we are to sufficiently strengthen our armed forces, which we get rules of engagement. Hey, the dam is done in 67, not bad. Less division attack, more war support, and a bonus for military police. Congratulations, Iberia. Even though the Germans abandoned the project years ago. Very cool. Um, I keep cutting this. Is there really any point to? Oh, that's a lot of debt. That is a lot of debt. Oh my goodness. If I cut it, Oh, it actually does something for us. It's only a billion now. Only a billion. Yeah. 
Keep making stuff, guys. Keep making. You're doing a great job. After that, I'm going to make some more military factories. Oh, the reason for that, we have more military spending because we actually made more military factories uh, from our focus tree. Not because I wanted to make any. Uh, you'll do that, and then you do... We could go over there. It's fine. Cool. I love building stuff up. Build, 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 build. Repurpose Soviet infrastructure. Slightly decreases GDP. Slightly decreases scoring time. Go ahead and do that. We could do this as well to get more stability. A little more weekly manpower, which wouldn't be bad. I'm going to do this first because we'll get that done as quickly as possible. That would be okay with me. Yeah, we definitely have to make sure that we keep making more civilian factories so we can lower this spending for uh, the military stuff. Nice. An ideological struggle? Or perhaps... Yeah, let's get it done this way, Path. Expand the militias. The militia system we now have was good for raiding neighbors and fighting against other militias, but things have changed. We are now creating a professional army to compete with other professional armies. Groups of ill-equipped troops grouped together by locality with no regard to organizational structure are no longer acceptable. But that doesn't mean we can't tweak them a bit to make them fit. The Red Army, as we want, is a professional force, yes, but it's also backed by numerous irregular forces in reserve. These will be called up to fill the lines in the event of war. These irregular units are direct descendants of the militias, and they will fill the same purpose. We get manpower and two more units, which we will probably immediately convert. Hey, look, less than a billion. Do we just build something? We might have. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. And, uh, cost. I don't, I don't like more cost, please. Ooh, encouraging returning expert. Ooh, weekly stability goes up for five weeks. You get basically 10% 10 more, 10 more. Yeah. And you get more war support. That is so good. That is so worth it, man. Because you get even more stability. You get more production. I think cap as well. And just production, period. Oh, I love it. Uh, what I don't love is all this. Eventually, I will cut construction spending. Like, I will cut it by a whole bunch, but we're not there yet. We are definitely not there yet. We just gotta build, 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 build. Once we run out of space, though, man. Oh, oh, actually, we finished building a thing of civilian factories, huh? Oh, and we are boosting up the... Just keep... Oh, that did nothing. Hmm, well, whatever. Doing that gives us more political power, too, which is also very nice. Yeah, it is 67 July 27th. Not bad. Expand the militias, my friends. And now, we can go over here. Back on the world stage, the new union. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking we gotta go the other way, just because we already did the one thing at one time. War support. I'll do that back on the world stage. No ground should be given to the capitalist scum. Southern has come to this very realization, and so has the Central Committee. They are constantly subversive threat, mingling at first, before undermining and destroying their revolution. Instead of dealing with any of the superpowers, we shall create a new alliance on our own terms. Ooh, army professionalism. We should probably do that, get there as quickly as possible. But I want to see what we can do with Cuba. That's really what I want to see. All right, so that's the case. We're done making you. Uh, actually, no. You were just random divisions that came out. Horizontal stuff? Good. Anything else here? Military factory construction speed? Eh, we might as well grab that. Yeah. And we made another division. Good. Now, now we have a good amount of units. They're not great units, but they're our units. Uh, do that. We have plenty of army XP, which is good. Yeah, keep you keep them on low. You guys will keep them medium. Right now, we can encourage people to come back, but now we good. Repurpose Soviet infrastructure. That's what we're going to wait for next. In which we get 1.12 a day. 80% stability. Not bad. Hopefully, this goes up more and more and more and more. And here we will go with... The Vipuri Conference? A crisis averted between the Western Russian Free Republic and Finland. Not bad. And we can also encourage that very soon as well. Same amount. So going out over here. 1.22. We're spending a lot on the military. I mean, obviously we're increasing our forces and our size of our forces. That's looking better. We're actually making planes now. That's going to be really helpful. Really, really helpful. Plenty of anti-tank. We're actually making tanks now. Wow. International outreach. Uh, go ahead and do... Through the hills. Let's try that. So our forces are extremely adaptive, fighting in the harsh and peculiar terrain of eastern Siberia. Unfortunately, Russia is a big place and it contains so many types of terrain our local militias are inexperienced in. If we wish to win, then we must correct this, and we find mountains and plains, however few in number, and send our troops there for maneuvers. They will learn to live in unfamiliar areas, and they will learn to make them their home, and they will learn to fight in them. The enemies we face in the swaths of occupied Russia will find themselves confronted by forces as adept as they are in the battlefield. Ah, <sighs> very good, very, very, very good. 1.17. It is what it is, just because I think we're making more units, so. Yeah. At this point, go ahead and convert them all. I think I'm done making these divisions. Yeah. You know, we could use that, but now, nah. I don't want to use garbage. No garbage here. And by garbage, I mean okay units. You know, they're okay. Actually, let's come back over here. We're going to increase maybe the size. Uh, we could... That might not be bad, but if we have enough planes, I think we'll do okay. So if right now, we need more artillery and guns. Artillery, guns, support equipment. Artillery, guns. 
Which we're making 35 a day. Artillery, though. Guns and support equipment. I think that would be pretty good. Uh, let's see. We even have some motorized being made. Which is very nice. Even though we could use a rubber refinery. How are we doing over here? Oh, we're still building some more stuff. Very nice. Very nice. Gain... F I don't really need more fuel. I'm starting to run out of the places to build stuff. That is not good. And go through the hills. Beautiful. Over the valleys. So remember the hills? That was only the first part. Now we train even more. More exercises, more courses, and more requirements. We have the most prepared army we can field, and it will bring the revolution to all of the lands of Russia. But we cannot just have survival courses in our training camps. We will also introduce new concepts to the recruits and our existing units. The implementation of armored vehicles will be a topic, as well as artillery and support battalions. Everything that the old Red Army did, we will do so, and more so. Even our militia man must understand that war isn't a test of men. It is fought with weapons as well. And these weapons can give us victory. And a double 100% bonus for... Tanks. Very nice. Workers, organizations, the popularity of the government. Oh, heck yeah. So right now, our government is 83% popular. Not bad. I'm going to do this. Let's get more daily political power and help our was it, industrial self. 83%. Oh, wait. I have to wait for it to go by first, right? Yeah. So when removed, industrial equipment slowly increase, goes up. Slightly more GDP. We enjoy 0.91 right now. And we get three more civilian factories back. 0.9. Does it go up at all, please? 0.99, not bad, not bad. Oh man, that deficit's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I do not like that. Woo! We need to conquer more lands then. Actually, at the very least, I want to have a army, an army, at least at the exact same size, if not bigger. Oh, they got drugs here. As the Central Siberian Federation, disproportionate population, legacy. Ah, oh, they have legacy of the Siberian plan. Oh, I don't know what that is. Huh. Okay, well, okay, whatever. What else they got? They have the Kuznetsk Basin, and an overextended administration. Now, that is nice to see. They got a lot of manpower. They have roughly half our factories, and we got way more divisions than they do. So, let's maybe calm down on divisions for now. And let's get some better motorized. Again, we get to get improvements here, but we're going to wait just a little bit longer. Even better motorized. Good. Yeah, uh, military austerity. Yeah, we kind of have to do that. You know what? Decrease by one. We don't need that many factories for now, but let's do partisans no more. Our partisans were fast to become a feared force on the face of the battlefields of Russia. But they were always plagued by disorganization. They have been aligned without leaders. However, this will soon be changed, and the free partisan bands will be incorporated into our army where they can be better coordinated. We are partisans no more. We no longer have to hide in the shadows. We can come out and bring the fight to our enemies. The revolution will, we will be well defended. It will be well defended. And its people properly protected. Bonus for our land auction and more army XP, which is very, very nice. All right, worker proof, worker training moderately increases GDP. Not bad. Just flat out increases GDP. I like that. Army professionalism increases as well. I want this one. Yeah, I want I want as much GDP. 13.09, nice. Oh, Puyi is dead. A name lost to the history books. That is terrible. Absolutely terrible. So here. Uh, I would like to make more tanks. I want tank divisions. I love tank divisions. Because they're so easy to use. They're pretty noob-friendly. Usually. Uh, these motorized... These will probably honestly become tank divisions just because... Uh, it is what it is. <laughs> Armor. Yeah, we don't even have any... We have them research, right? Yeah, we have this research, but we don't have any tank templates. So let's go ahead and alter this then. There you go. Mechum 12. Oh, that costs 25 army XP. God dang, son. Well, that's okay. Yeah, this has... What? Five plus five armor. This would actually increase. This is less armor, so I don't know. Never really found a use to use them. Five five. I honestly kind of prefer six five. We'll keep it like that for now, though. That armor isn't bad. Its piercing isn't ideal. It really isn't ideal whatsoever. <sighs> yeah, that's what we got. I would prefer to have these as APCs, honestly. Yeah, because that that gives you just a little bit more armor. Yeah, these tanks are not going to be looking great. Turn. Partisans no more. An ideological struggle. We have no reason to believe our soldiers lack the motivation to fight, but reinforcing their ideological fervor will only help embolden them. We will have to, or they will have to be reminded of the reasons they fight. Our message to the men will be projected loud and clear. You do not fight for the Red Army. You also fight for the revolution itself. Good words of motivation. And then we're probably going to grab higher foreign instructors because I, I want to get more army XP. Uh, improved worker training would be nice, but that's okay. This doesn't help. This does not help our GDP, but whatever. Currently get 1.38 a day. Nice. Not bad. Uh, civilian budget boost. You know what? I'm going to keep doing that. Keep building, 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 building. So we got the military factory done. We're trying to get the refinery done as well now. And keep building more civilian factories. More and more GDP. Oh! Japan was at war? 
Zinnian. Zinnan. Zinnan. Oh, they're down. Oh, oh. Oh, boy. Help. Uh, provisional governing authority. Oh, that is not good. Army of the Southwest. Call the BMO. Oh, hello. The final offensive. That is more weekly devastation. Huh. Uh, that's nice to have. That's actually really, really nice. 1970 stuff would be nice, but you know what? For now, we can always research this stuff later on. We can always research some of this stuff later on. Let's get some improved anti-air equipment. Let's not produce garbage, right? That other stuff we can use when we're doing other stuff. Uh, yes, I mean, battle tanks. Do that already. Do we have any APCs here? We are already making... Yeah, we already are making AP, more APCs, which is really nice. Mm hmm. 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 I don't want to do this. But there we go. Cool. 13.3 billion, even though we are still increasing our deficit. It is what it is. And let's go ahead and do... Uh, Krasnaya Armia Vesk Silni. Every necessary improvement in, to our army has been completed and now can stand as an indomitable force, a force without an equal. Our soldiers, armed with their rifles and their revolutionary convictions, steadfastly await their opportunity to fight for a collective cause soon. They will overcome all opposition and unite all of our people into the revolution. We are without doubt that they will succeed, and now we are looking forward to the day our soldiers return home triumphant and can all live alongside each other, unified and free. More army professionalism and army XP. Thank you, the Great Caucus Revolt. Will the caucus finally be free? Probably not. Probably not. I wonder what Germany's going to do now. Like, come on, Germany. I want you to conquer. Like, I don't know what they're... They might be bugged, maybe? I doubt it, but they might be bugged. Do they need to, like... Or maybe they're done. Maybe they're done with the tree. Do, do, do they need, like, political power to go to war or something? Oh. We have not succeeded in the conquest of Iberia. Conquest of Hungary. And we've cemented our place in Europe. Oh, maybe they need to do that. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll, after this episode, take a look at what's going on with Germany. I want them, I want to see them be more aggressive right now. I really, really do. Oh, you know what? Instead of that, we have that. We're getting more army XP every day bonus. So we must have train everyone for now. That's fine. Just train everyone. A fleet of our own. The witch's wind chilled Valerie Sablin to the bone as he walked into the makeshift piers of the Magadan dockyard. Hands shoved into his overcoat's pockets, his breath fading to mist as if he left his mouth. As it, as it left his mouth. His teeth chattered ever so slightly as he made his way across the pier to the small ship anchored at the end of the wooden trail. Valerie had always loved to see his father had been in the Navy and he had once planned to join as well in his youth. He remembered the summers of his childhood swimming with his friends in lakes, pretending to reenact famous battles of the war. He felt That felt so long ago, though, he thought, shaking his head, but he had no time for this. General Secretary, the man at the end of the dock, Zem Chuikov, oh, a newly minted captain of the Red Navy, saluted. She isn't much to look at, I'm afraid, but she packs a punch. The first Red Navy vessel built in God knows how many years now. Valerie nodded. Does she have a name, comrade? I'm told all ships need them. The man smiled. The men were hoping that you'd be the one to name it, comrade general secretary. Him, Salvin wasn't sure what to make of it. He wasn't an admiral nor a sailor, but if the people who believed in him desired it, then it would be done. He walked the edge of the, dock, of the deck for a moment, thinking. The word left his lips so fast the captain had to wonder if he had practiced it. Storovs... Oh, man, I don't know how to say that. Storovsevoy. Sentry. A good name, comrade. Um, don't tell me that's a name that that was actually. Uh, that, I think that's the actual name of the ship that he was on before he uh, was told to go bye bye. We'll put it like that. Yeah, I remember. I actually looked up Salvin in real life. He's an interesting fellow. Interesting. Very interesting. Cool. Ah, oh, yes, looking pretty good. Not too bad. Uh, I'm gonna actually probably get uh, uh, armored. No, let's go here. APCs in. Yeah, that's looking pretty pretty good for armor then. I might just go ahead and make these twenty comp forty combat width. There you go. Twenty two combat width, not ideal, but whatever. All right, we're done with that. So let's go ahead and do our comrades in the Caribbean. The island of Cuba has had a constant history of violent upheaval, but now that Fidel Castro has taken the reins and has established a social stronghold there, though we know that they show sympathy to the Organization of Free Nations, the committee knows that Castro only does this out of necessity. A special diplomatic mission will be sent to the Cubans in the form of a letter to begin opening up diplomacy between their country and ours, harking back to what Lenin said how it must be all workers who shall work towards the revolution and not only some. That'd be good. The dead tempered steel, the movement of the men of the 44th Battalion. Uh, yeah, moved across the obstacle course, were less like soldiers and more like graceful but deadly acrobats. The troops moved in perfect timing across the obstacle course, leaping from hook. 
to hoop to hoop as thought they were born on them, climbing barriers as they thought they were ladders. He smiled as he turned to Lieutenant Colonel Novikov. I must admit, Comrade Commander, your new logistical program has worked wonders on the unit, the officer said. And, of course, sobbed and smiled. The soldiers in the Red Army are just another kind of worker, but instead of creating value, they protect the value from the bourgeois thievery. Give them the decency that all workers deserve, and they shall shine like all men can if given the chance. Proving material conditions re create, re -create, which create material rewards. So, at least they're doing better now. We don't want anyone to do poorly, but we have the Red Twilight now. Since the fall of London, uh, Eric Blair, better known by his pen name of George Orwell, has gained prominence from his political writings done in exile in Canada. Today, he has released his most lengthy opus, the last chapter in his legacy of the Belt Creek alternate series, The Red Twilight. The series takes place in a timeline that diverges from our own, with a central power's victory in the First World War, and has received criticism at critical attention for its allegorical de deconstruction of our world. After the defeat of the Entente, the governments of the British Empire and France quickly collapse and they are replaced by socialist republics, while Russia eventually becomes a fascistic dictatorship led by the white revolutionary Boris Sevenkov. I've never heard of his name before. I wonder if you could play as him. After uh, unifying to destroy the German Empire, her allies, and the remnants of the Entente, the alliance quickly shatters with the liberation, libertarian syndicalist Commune of France and Oswald Mosley Union of Britain, forging their own internationals and engaging in an apocalyptic nuclear war that leaves Europe and North America in ruins, while Russia and Japan engage in a similarly destructive schism. The world by 1962 is devastated by nuclear fallout and divided by a four-sided armistice threatening to end either civilization or enslave it under the various flavors of totalitarianism. Ending with the English socialist American Commonwealth tearing apart itself into a third American Civil War. Ooh, as white supremacists revolt in the South, the novels received analysis for its complex parallels with the violent conflicts occurring all around the world. Though some dismiss it as no different than the rest of the glut of alt history novels that have been filling bookshelves in recent years. Responding to his critics, Orwell's addressed the implausibility of this universe by writing, This universe is no less stranger than anything that has happened in ours for the last half century. We live in a childish fantasy, don't we? Oh, oh, oh. That's all I can say. Just, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Weekly manpower would be nice, but we don't need to do that. Yep, moderately, uh, moderately, research facilities. Bonus industry sounds like fun. Independence for the United Arab Emirates. Okay, the UAE is free. Well, good job, guys. And now, uh, but I like the bonus to industry. I really do. Research facilities wouldn't be bad. Academic base might not be bad either. Moderately, moderately, moderately. I'm going to go with worker training just because we get a blueprint bonus. I, I like that a lot. I really do. Let's go back here. Since we're not even making these divisions yet, let's go throw, make these 40 combat widths if we can. That's a lot of army XP, not gonna lie. I think it's, f yeah, 5, 10, right? Uh, I, I somewhat forget. That's not bad. 0 0.037 is okay. Let's go ahead and convert these all to APCs. We're not gonna be able to afford these at all, but maybe we'll be able to make one by the end of the campaign. There we go. 30 combat width, not ideal. 5, hmm... Actually, why did I make that over there? Whoops, my bad. That is my fault. Armored battalions. Oh, no cost. There we go. Here we and throw one over here. Just to make sure they have enough organization, even though organization is looking pretty bad right now. I might not make these 15-5. I want more organization. That'll help out. You know what? We'll do that. We'll do 6-14. A little different. Organization isn't bad. HP is not too bad. Suppression is pretty good. Weight, supply. That's a lot of supply. That's actually a lot of supply. If that's the case, I need to get some logistic companies. But that breakthrough is awesome. Just, mmm. 40 combat width. We probably can't ever afford this, but that's okay with me. No, I don't. Mmm. Just going to make it. That's fine. I'd rather have it in production for now. Uh, let's see. 1968. Happy 1968, my friends. We can't grab this. We can't grab anything down here, but we can grab more resource efficiency gain, but that'd be kind of a waste for us. 70? No. Mechanical rangefinder? No. Light aircraft? Sure. Jet engines would be very good for us. And now we shall do international outreach. Though socialism is a movement that sputters in the dark, beaten down by the evils of capitalism and fascism in a world that is sympathetic of both, there still, yes, ex exists the light of human progress. Some nations remain that follow the principles of socialism, some which may not necessarily follow our line of thinking, but we are not dogmatic fools. Those championing the causes of socialism will be befriended, and the end and the Republic will begin forming a line of relations between all of them. Yes, we can outreach to other nations that could use assistance. That'd be very, very good. Keep making factories. Keep making... We almost have three lines of 20, 20, 20. Which, actually, because of that, I'm probably going to start cutting this down, the, the construction budget, just by a little bit. It decreases cost only by 5%. It's really the military that costs the most, followed by the civilian spending. But if I can take out another nation, we can do pretty darn well. We already have 19 divisions. These guys, they have up to 8, maybe. How about the guys even further over here? That's a lot of divisions. That's not, that's not, that's not going to be easy to take out. Actually, hold on. We just got spending. It looks like it actually went back, back 
went back up as we cut spending. Huh. Regardless, uh, education. Let's do education first, and then we'll do some scientific research. We're currently at 13.79 billion in terms of GDP, which is not bad. Not bad. And we're about to get more scientific research. Keep improving ourselves. Improvement is always good. Especially self-improvement. Nice. Let's go grab these guys. Ah, great. Another division. International outreach. Very, very good. Extend economic aid. We found our own two feet in this world. However, many have not. And a number of socialist nations have found themselves surrounded by the hostile powers, alone and threatened on all sides. With a rising socialist power like us on the horizon, we can set a president as a connector for all of socialism across the world. To whoever we can, we shall send help and trade deals. And in turn, both they and us will prosper. Cuba, we get some better relations, we get some chromium, we get some steel, and uh, some uh, convoys. Cool. Very cool. 0.79. That debt is still increasing because, well, we keep spending a lot of money. It is what it is. Uh, but, well, not too bad. Main battle. Actually, that's not bad for main battle tanks. We want 40 combat with tanks. That's not bad at all. Artillery isn't looking too bad. We got plenty of AK 47s for now, which we need to improve. Support equipment isn't looking terrible. We want to use some planes. APCs, though. Not bad. Uh, is this. How much do we actually need? We need a lot of equipment. Let's see. Tank wise, 560. APC wise, 300. We can actually kind of afford this. That's actually surprising. We can actually kind of afford this stuff. You know, if we run out of stuff to build, uh, I might recommend just building here on the front lines because, well, that's where we're going to have to be. I think we'll probably get at least one more technology in which we can increase the number of max factories in a single state. So we're just going to do that as well. That would be good. And actually, radar. Let's build up radar first. Because we want to have as much information as possible to make sure that we can do pretty well. That's a lot of that. But the tyrants fear our might. The Germans are afraid of us. They've always have been, judging by their attempted war of extermination against the many people who did not deserve it. The Reich's crimes are innumerable, but we shall decry all of them. In doing so, Sablin has decided that we will recognize ourselves not only as a growing socialist nation, but as a direct successor to the Bukharanite USSR that existed before the fall. Long live the revolution. As long as we live, the fascist menace will know no peace. We get political power, war support, and the German Reich gets an event. We need some more uh, manpower. So if I do this, our debt continues to increase. So we're going to do it. Keep building. Build, 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 build. I want to build. Once our debt reaches our GDP levels of 14 billion, I'm going to start slashing like crazy. The civilian budget will be slashed. Every, Pretty much every budget will be slashed until we don't need to slash the military budget to fight these guys over here, which will be fine. Uh, agricultural mechanization. It doesn't help our GDP at all, which is really disappointing, but whatever. And also, by increasing the civilian budget, we also get more political power, like I said before. So that's good. How is the Western... Yeah, we look, I think we looked at it. Oh, Vyatka is the capital. The Western Russian Republic. Oh, yeah, that is a interesting thing, Alexei Kosi again. Oh, okay. Severe trade. Oh, they're fighting Finland still. And Onega. Oh, they are not... Hmm. They have an overextended administration. You guys, the real district. The death of Antonio de Oliveira Salazar. No, that's in uh, Portugal, right? Or the Iberian Union. Juan Caldillo is down. Sentinels of Russia. Okay, cool. How strong are they? They are... Yeah, they're not too bad. These guys are weak. These guys are... Okay, honestly, our division, our army is almost equal, if not better, to most. Except for, like, that one group. Cool. Come over here. 14.19 billion. Never enough, of course. Never enough. Let's get some better guns. More soft attack. It's only 2% more, but I'll take it. I'll gladly take it. Invest in construction. I'd like to... Agricultural stuff first. And then we will do... Maybe returning... Expatriates. But we've almost achieved the goal that I wanted to at the beginning of this episode, and that was to get to mid-1968. So, let's do Unite the World in Song. We must take the final steps. The banner of the revolution must not be disunited. It cannot be if it is ever to be triumphed, or to triumph. In that, we will be its founders and spark the freedom that was lost since ever since our hands, defeat of the hands of the Reich will be found and renewed once again. I'm sorry, I'm tripping over my own words right now. Soon, Valery Mikhailovich Sablin will find himself holding perhaps the most grand speech he's ever had to hold in his life, as he will call upon all the socialist parties in the world to come and attend in the city of Magadan. There, Sablin will proclaim the birthing of a new organization, the Socialist International. Uh, let's go ahead and... Mm, go ahead and do this. Yeah, let's do that one first. We do get more construction speed and increases our GDP. And then we can encourage returning expatriates. Weekly manpower isn't bad, but I want to get more just construction done. The faster we get construction done, the less construction that will probably have to be taken on elsewhere. So I think we'll be doing okay with that. Actually, can we build... Hmm. Maybe we should build a nuclear reactor. It's going to take forever and we might not actually get it done, but that sounds like a very interesting, very interesting proposal to do. Very interesting. 
And building a parade is really nice. Oh, the Iberian Federal Government. I really want to play as Iberia. I really do. Oh, no, 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 no. What happened? Why are there countries coming out of you? Seriously, Iberia, what did you do? I If I, if I play as Iberia, I want to try to probably keep them connected at least once. That's a lot of defense. That's not bad. Less attack, more defense. Ooh. Weekly War Support goes down. Iberian... Oh, crap. Everything's dying. Critically unstable. Only a deus ex machina. Machina. Save the Iberian people now. Oh. Oh, hello. It is Battle Royale Spain Edition. Or Iberia Edition. Uh, go ahead and do that. That's fine. The Iberian Wars. In a war, there's no winners or losers. Only victims. And now, unfortunately, we are done with our focus tree at the moment. I don't think this is the end yet. Because we still have to take out the rest of Siberia. And we, I think, I, I don't remember, there might not be any more after this feat, but there might, but it's still okay, because now we get over two political power a day, which means whenever we get decisions like this, we have good stuff. So General Secretary Sablin's remarks on the opening of the International Socialist Convention. Comrades, brothers and sisters, welcome to Mag Magadan and the Far Eastern Soviet, or Socialist Republic. Today, representatives of every socialist nation in the world have gathered here to meet their comrades all over the world, to discuss the issues in world politics, to raise awareness of your individual causes and struggles, and to see for yourselves the progress and reconstruction of Eastern or Etern, Etern Siberia under socialism. International awareness is important for the cause of socialism for too, far too long. We've wondered about uncoordinated, aimless, blind to issues outside our own countries, but the struggle of the workers is an international one. The oppressors of the world, from the mega corporations of North America and Europe to the dictators of South America and Africa, and the warlords and aristocrats of Asia, all put aside their put aside their supposed differences to suppress movements of the working class in their own countries. We must have a means of defending ourselves. Comrades, the time has come to cast off the blinders of nationalism and to awaken to the world around us, to coordinate and to plan the revolution of the working class with parties and organizations around the world to stand together against the enemies of the working people. What we need, brothers and sisters, is not a loose association. What we need is a new international. Ruling socialist parties throughout the world will be approached with an offer to join the proposed Communist Information Bureau. Why is it communist, though? I thought we wanted a socialist international. So we can invest in the Collective Defense Fund. Uh, funds for mutual defense to facilitate the interests of mutual cooperation among uh, improved anti-air. So on first. Uh, let's see, it's almost 70. Let's keep doing infantry stuff and get some support weapons through that help with breakthrough. And, yeah, so... The Socialist International serves as a premier means of providing global cooperation and strategic assistance. Through the SOC intern, and the social states may coordinate with each other directly and defensively and politically, and a forum to discuss the assistance to global proletarian and national liberation movements may be provided. Better equipment? World.2019.a. Oh, I guess they were working on this in 2019, which I kind of expect so. But anyways, infantry weapon improvements 6. Yes, please. More soft attack and defense. So, SOC intern and collective defense fund balance 0 0.00 million USD. Uh, dreams of freedom. Is anything up here? Nope. Still nothing. Very high, very low, very good. A nation chooses to observe. Ah, oh. Sullivan, so, I just talked with one of the delegations who was, who was so. What? What? Why? The, I didn't click on the thing. Uh, it just left. No. Who wanted to join us? CCF victory in Canada. Tommy Douglas. Cooperative Commonwealth Federation, biggest social democratic and agrarian party. Okay. Will it make democracy work for Canadians? I don't know, but if he wants to join us, that'd be cool. Oh, we didn't we didn't create our own faction. That's a big. That's a scary co-prosperity sphere. Attract workers. Oh, you're chained to them. Did they... Were they in a war against Japan? Slave of the Samurai. We'll pay $2 billion in civilian expenses every year to Japan. That is not cool. Chinese education status. World2020.d. Oh, boy. Now we're starting to see the game kind of break apart. We still have the Unity Pact here. Oh, and... Hold on. So, England, or I guess, you know, the Kingdom of England and Wales, they went with Thatcher, but she went with the OFN. Oh, I remember this tree. This is a nice tree. And it gets bigger and bigger once they do that again. So she went. The fortress up north. Oh, they're going to kill off Scotland next. Nice. Uh, let's see. Collective. No, that's not much else we can really do here. Uh, spending. So if I slash this. Okay, it does go down. That's good. That's good. Good stuff. Oh, our GDP growth is 9.4%. When did it go get higher? Huh. Okay, of course, we have the Arab League. We have the Africa Shield. Led by the Boer Republic, of course. As well as Afrikaner Abwehrfront, led by Otto Foschner. What happened? Oh god, this is all broken up. And Falanga Spain has defeated the Iberian federal government. That is sad. That is, hello. Very sad. You have no focus tree. You have no focus tree. That kind of sucks. Herzog, of course. Oh, ooh, invest. Oh, and state poverty relief program slightly increased GDP. Good. Go right ahead. 
Are you guys still fighting over here? It doesn't... Oh, yeah, it looks like you... Yep, you're still fighting. That's fine with me. But, you know, we've accomplished our goal, but we'll keep going on for now. Why not? I said I want to get to mid-1968, and we did. So let's keep going. Uh, we have the Hui there. Kazakhstan, Central Asia looks a little messy, but better agricultural methods. Without food, many men may not work. And without work, government simply can't cease to exist. The bureaucracy that's in it is evaporating in a matter of weeks, though, if that were to happen. However, the inverse is also true, with more food coming, more plenty, and the formation of ever more complex states. After all, were not the first states formed with the creation of agriculture? New agricultural inventions, or innovations, will reduce the amount of hard labor needed on the fields and shifts the workload to mechanized equipment like tractors and automated harvesters. Advances in fertilizers allow crops to grow quicker and cheaper. Man will have food and it will be plenty. Free conspiracy? Cool. For this bread, we thank thee. A little bit of lag? Oh boy. Don't tell me Japan's falling apart. Uh, we have now mass mechanization, so less division train time, more multi-population, more recruitable population factor, less consumer goods so we can spend more, and more output. Yes, please. All good stuff. I do want to invest in the collective, but I don't want to do it until we have a better balanced budget. Yeah, because that's almost $7 billion in debt. Our GDP is... Eh, it's looking okay, but... Mm. Ah, there they go. The Kingdom of England and Wales has gone to war with Scotland. How normal. Things are turning out to be pretty darn normal here. Actually, if I build this more... We get one rubber. We get a single rubber. Build that there. Keep making civilian factories, because that helps out with our civilian stuff for now. I really want to go to war, but we have to wait. I don't want to wait, though. I don't want to wait to prepare for war. It has to be January 1st, second hour, civilian budget boost. I could probably stop investing in the budget. But I'm going to keep investing anyways. I might lower the construction budget. It's less than a billion now, which is nice. I want to keep investing in the civilian spending portion and boosting that budget up as much as possible. Just for that extra political power. Because if you do that, you get like 0.1 or 0.15 political power extra every day, which is nice. But now we got this. Let's get some better fighters. Basic jet fighters. We are producing fighters, which is actually very, very nice. We don't have many of them, obviously. But you know what? I'd rather have some than none. Uh, we could train them as well. You consume fuel and increase the risk of air accidents. I'm not going to... I want to train them, but we don't really have the means to... God, I wish we could go to war with the rest of Siberia. I want to go to war with Siberia. We got everything done so far. I don't want to be punished like this. If they're not ready, I don't care. We are ready. We are ready to go. Oh, that's in a billion deficit. That's nice. Even though it's already... So now we almost have 50% of our entire GDP in debt. Ah, oh, screw it. You know what? Oh, wait. I can't do this? Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. I can't... Hmm. Okay, now we can see it. Okay. Invest in the collective? You know what? Let's invest in the collective. Maybe more people will want to join if we invest in the collective. So, for the defense of socialism and equality abroad, we've elected to put a portion of our budget towards the protection of our comrades within the SOC intern. These funds will be used by those who require the resources to keep the revolution burning and that our contribution may be absolutely vital in the years to come. And we, if we need to find that financial support. In the future, we will be able to withdraw a portion of the funding ourselves during the time of great need. Of course, only those who are waging war for the good of the humble worker may access a fund to ensure the sanctity of the, its usage. Now that our humble donation to the fund has been agreed upon, the only question remains of its size and contribution. 1%? 2.5%? 5%? We're going to go with the biggest co contribution, because I think we can... Even though we're in a great deal of debt, uh, this might... Inc oh, wow, we have $381 million in the defense fund. This might entice people to join us. So, maybe, maybe not. Uh, weekly stability, that'd be nice. I'm going to grab both of these, actually. That'd be good. Good. See, this is why I don't mind completing the focus tree, or the current tree, as fast as possible. Get all that extra political power. That's so nice. Less than a billion still. Beautiful. Let's see here. We've got two, one, one. And continuing to increase our infrastructure as well. Infantry equipment, or weapon improvement, level six. Yes, please. Um, I, I'm really emphasizing infantry stuff right now, just because... That's almost exclusively what we're using. So, and I forgot that uh, the next one after this one, we gotta get log logistic companies. I'm sp speaking too fast for my own good self. Logistic companies for not really infantry, but for the tanks and maintenance companies. We definitely need maintenance companies because we want to make sure that we don't lose too many of our own equipment. Man, we need a lot of tanks and anti-air. Oh, we're not making any any. Ooh, we need some anti-air. Even though we. Honestly, probably won't use it that much. I can't imagine that a lot of enemies here would have a lot of anti-air in Russia. But, you know, you never know. Just keep it on one for now. You know, keep it on two. That'd be fine. Uh, I can't really spare too much here, to be frank with you. Maybe we can do that. Maybe. Uh, support equipment. Maybe do that as well. Because we still got to focus on APCs a little bit. Even though APCs are looking pretty good. 
fighters. Well, we're working on it. We're working on tanks as well. You know what? Tanks go high. You you go up high. So we have at least two factories on anti-air for now. That'll be good. 91 factories. Of course, never enough. Never enough. Never, never, never enough. Uh, I don't want to do this, but there you go. Work more on factories. That'll be good. Budget-wise? Uh, oh, wow. We can build this up really quickly. Roads looking real nice. Even over here in 68, by the end of November, we'll have another level of Enchernes Chefs Sky. Oh, Peace Conference. Who died? Who's at war? Ah, the Scottish state. That's right. I forgot about the Scottish. England defeats Scotland. And Italy joins the OFN. Great. And the Falanga Spain looks like it's winning so far. Italy's joined, and so has England. British reunification. Rule Britannia. Britannia rule the waves. Britons never, never, never shall be slaves, which is a popular patriotic song. Yeah, this is looking interesting. Italy joined the OFN. Hold, the French state did as well. Oh, that is a really strong state. Fascist Pierre Poujad is... Well, he's fascist. But he also joined... Oh, we have a decrease. Oh, yes. Yes, decrease in poverty. Yes. Logistics 1. Thanks to the ever greater poverty relief efforts. As well as expansion of our civilian economy. Oh, there they go. The poverty rate has decreased significantly enough to be notable internationally, as our government congratulates itself for its efforts. Official, f first official state projections on the impact of this improved popular prosperity are filed, stating that the people are able to access superior goods, economic opportunities shall be greatly increased, and our workforce shall be capable of greater and greater feats, which will be a great thing, a toast to our economists. So we now only have 25 to 50% of the poverty rate, which is great. A lot less multi population, but more recruitable population, factor stability, war support, construction speed, re research speed, output, and more people we can tax. God, I love it. Yeah. Uh, this is looking pretty good. The OFN is looking really awesome. Look at that. That is beautiful. A huge chunk of Northern Africa and Eastern Africa has joined the OFN with, of course, well, I guess the United Kingdom of England, Wales, and Scotland, and Cornwall, but no Northern Ireland. We have Hungary. They have Croatia. We don't have them, but they have Italy and the French state. I um, mean, that's, that's pretty good. Military austerity. Yeah, I don't think so. 700 million, not bad. Debt, fifth, look at that GDP, not too bad either. Repurpose Soviet infrastructure, yes, just go ahead and do it. Slightly increases GDP, we get more infrastructure so we can build, we need to build less then, that'd be nice. I think we're doing really awesome. My goal, my actual goal, like I said earlier, like my goal was to get to like, by mid-1968. My real goal was to get to 1969 in this episode. That was my real goal. I didn't tell you guys, I was hoping we'd get there. And it looks like we will, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, I need, I need, I definitely need to get more support equipment. I won't throw tanks on there. Oh, are we missing anti-air, probably? Yeah, anti-air equipment. It's fine, whatever. It happens. Uh, not bad. Yeah, anti-air's looking pretty bad. Tanks looking slightly better. Guns looking pretty good. Support equipment looking pretty good. Even planes aren't doing too bad now. 91,000, not bad, not bad. How are these guys doing? Because we're going to fight them, obviously, next. Well, they're not doing anything in their focus tree, because they might not have any. I'm zooming out, zooming in. Oh, they got nothing over there. That's fine. Which means they might be stuck with 48 divisions until we kill them off. Plenty of manpower. 42 factories. I'd love to have 42 more factories under us. The military goal. Uh, actually, I think they're sort of waiting for someone to kill off the Euro League, actually. You guys have enough divisions. I have 21. That, they have a bigger army than us, which is not good. They fit. Uh, we probably have a relatively equal amount of divisions power. Uh, 71. Hey, they're just... I was going to say they're about the same military size, but they're not actually. Because we have 92 factories. We've been building out the wazoo, man. We've been building, 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 building. All right, civilian budget boost. That's fine. Uh, do that one next. Keep building at least one civilian factory for now. Oh, weapon improvements. Great. Oh, I, I, I just want to keep spending. I'm sorry. I have a problem. I have a problem. I have a spending problem. I know. I know I do. Uh, do 68. Yeah, you might as well. Even more, 10% more soft attack. Yes, yes, yes. And slowly I'll cut, start cutting away the construction budget, even though it's the smallest budget. The military is probably the worst thing here. Look at our GDP growth. It's gotten even higher. It used to be 9 point something percent. Now it's 10.1. Ah, oh, so good. Empower workers organizations, you bet we will. And get more political power in the process. We can invest in the collective defensive fund. Uh, I really wish we'd make that an actual international... Like, like see as see it as a faction. That actually would have been really great. Keep building, guys. Keep building. How is our resources? Did we get at least one rubber? We were at minus three for a while. 
We're still minus three. So better industrial expertise. New training programs are, motiv are mo motivated by a need for better workers and managers has resulted in industrial workplaces that are more exact, efficient, and smart in the production of goods. New technologies and equipment are important, but they're never to trump the human element, which is driven by practice and education. These new training programs, motivated by national vocational programs and investments in worker safety programs, have driven our workers further towards true, perfect industrial efficiency. When they clock in, they will become machines of the highest order. That is the goal. Innovative industry. More cap, growth, and retention. Yes! Yes! So good. Invest in heavy machinery. Uh, industrial equipment increases GDP. Yes. Yes, look at that. Mass mechanization, primary schooling, which is... Eh. What do we just get? We got innovative industry. We have one of the most... In the world. The most innovative industries ever created. That is awesome. We are the leaders in the world for that. That is amazing. I don't think I've ever gotten that or achieved that before. Uh, we definitely need more of this. Definitely get more of this as well. I'd like to get more planes, but they're kind of... I've obviously relegated them to a secondary role. I'd like to get more tactical bombers. Motorize is fine for now. We can invest in the collective. And that's looking too, not too bad. But once we hit 69, nice. But we're going to have to end the episode because this has gone on to be a very, very long episode. we got about a week left, though, which is fine. Uh, the economy... It's not doing too poorly. I'm actually glad that we chose 4% less interest rate. That is really nice for us. Really, really nice. So good. Too bad we have an annual deficit, though. Just keep building, building, building. Nice. Maybe get another one of these, perhaps. Just go ahead. That's fine. Totally fine. And happy 1969. My friends. There we go. Here we go, boys. We can prepare for war. But... We're going to end the episode here and save that for next time. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we will reclaim all of Central Siberia under the red flag. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.